You go ahead. Okay. All right. The reason we're doing this is we want to up our game a little bit when it comes to our live interactive uh, live shots. So that's a term everybody uses, but probably doesn't use correctly. And we're going to go over some of the, the do's and don'ts and whatever. But even we started thinking about this like a month ago. And even since then, things have gotten better. So I think we're thinking about this, but we just want to take it to the next level, be consistent. A lot of that is strategy on where we decide where we're going to do these and then how we do them. Um, but, you know, we're, we're getting there. We're close. We're much better than other stations, but we want to just take it to the next level, be more consistent and have everybody kind of thinking about this stuff when we get into it. I wrote down a really quick note. Be professional, but show off your personality. I think it's an equal balance of both. And I wrote down some notes and I want to start with language and delivery because this is so important to me. And I think Joel D too, we do this really well. Um, be conversational when you're talking to us, when you're talking to the viewer. Um, it makes you relatable and it makes you sound like a real human, right? So um, avoid cop talk. And I did write down a specific example that was said, um, a male succumbed to his injuries. If you were talking to someone in person, you would never really say that. So, you know, the man who was shot died. You could say that or one of many other things. Um, so that's one thing, your delivery um, and how you're presenting yourself. If you look like you're you know, nervous, it's going to come across. Just relax and just talk conversationally. And you can also relax in certain situations with your tag as well. And this is really important. It doesn't always work, but it can work a lot, especially when you're in the studio and out in the field as well. So I hear a lot of reporting in Harrisburg, Dauphin County. I'm Jasmine Brooks for CBS 21 News, and it's so formal, and really, you're just thrown back to me. So you can say, that's the latest in Harrisburg, Jasmine, back to you. And it just sounds so much better and comes across friendlier and even more confident. Um, and so then I also wrote some notes on what to avoid that I think are really important as well. So... Um, when you're with your photographer, if you have one, obviously you're working as a team. Um, and I find, and this drives me crazy, that a lot of times you'll ask your photographer to pan. But panning, although it can be really great, uh, is not an active live shot. So it's important to make sure that your uh, photographer is off the sticks as much as possible, off the sticks, and following your lead as you take us and show us something, and you're moving, and you're leading and directing your photographer, and they're not just panning over. Um, and so we have some examples of those. So Brian, you have a first uh, video, better use of elements. Can't hear it. Yeah, we'll have yeah, to start it over. We can't hear it. Get out of it. Hold on. Hey, neighbors, you hear it now? Yeah. All right, hold on. All right, here we go. This area are, are very upset right now, but only half of them. Over here, the folks are showing beautifully manicured vines. Everything is cut really nice. The people over here have let this overgrowth get out of control. So that was bad. Hey, everybody, this neighborhood. The folks that live here like. Do you want to talk after each one or? Uh, sure. Just pointing out that that one is a pan and you saw two different things, which is fine, but it's more effective if you do it this way and take us there and reveal it a little bit because you're, you have the right atmosphere here. Sure. Hey everybody, this neighborhood, the folks that live here like to think of it as a well-kept place, very clean, very nice. And that's what you're seeing right here. No overgrowth, nothing, don't even see any green, very nice fence, but come with me this way. Looks like a forest already. All this overgrowth that's starting to overtake the neighborhood is starting to cause problems. Look here, you can't even get through here in case you wanted to. The door is actually behind this location. You can't even see it anymore because it's taken over by all this growth. And this is causing a major problem in the neighborhood and between the people who live here. All right. Okay. So yeah, so once again, kind of obvious, uh, the first part, was fine. We showed two different things, but you didn't get any details. You didn't take us there, and you did, there was no kind of surprise element as you went to it. But also, it wasn't the entire package. I'll talk about this more later. I it's just want to say problems it's causing as well. So that's what comes after this point. So we don't give everything away in the intro, mm -hmm. although we would try to show some places and go go somewhere. It's leading towards something else as well. 
And Joldy, for the next video, just so I can um, be sure, it is actually just the good one. We did not post my bad one. So, and I, I want to tell you guys, everybody does have a different style. So obviously this is to encourage you to find your style and move a lot, but I'm aggressive and I'm loud. And so, you know, here's me. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. All right. It is 829 in just... Now it's 8.30. In just 30 minutes, Joel D, the tow truck company is coming here. Last night, there was a concert at CBS 21. Today, nearly 20 cars are still parked here, 18 to be exact. This man right here, sir, is this your car? This is my car. Do you know you only have 30 minutes to move it? I was just about to leave. Okay, so he's one of the lucky ones not going to face that fine. I talked to the tow truck company today. They said it's $100 per car if they're still here by 9 o'clock tonight. They said... So there's an example again, you're walking, you're giving us some, you know, I talked to the tow truck driver. I'm not going to put him on necessarily because I know the information he gave me and it's, it's important, but kind of boring to hear him talk. But this guy over here, he's actually moving his car. I'm going to catch up with him. Of course, you're not always going to find that person oh. perfectly placed. Right. Okay. Let's talk about strategy. So We've been really good at this lately with a couple of people. In particular, Samantha York has been in some great locations for her live shots or as live. She was in a basement talking about flooding. She was at that location yesterday to show exactly how that search and rescue was going. Part of a, a great live shot is the strategy ahead of time, thinking while I'm on this story, where do I want to be later to present this story? A lot of times, business is closed by 5 o'clock, so it doesn't sound like it's going to be open. Ask them to be open. Um, uh, Megan did a good job of this the other day. She was in the actual learning facility. So say, hey, I'm going to be on at five and six. Can I be here in the restaurant where the story is about? Can I be here in the place where this is about? And they say, well, be closed at five. But they usually realize, you know, usually it's a story to either help them or show what's going on. They wouldn't mind staying open later. And then you're in the atmosphere where things are happening. And then think about it. Is there something that I was going to show in video that I can show better myself and not in a stand up because in the middle of a package, but in the live shot to introduce you to what's going on. And those things happen all the time, but you got to look for them and think about them while you're there. Oh, this would make good for a live shot. Um, Ryan did it something nicely a couple of days ago where he showed the piece of equipment that's not going to be made because they don't have enough employees. OK, that's good. We were there. Um, so think about your strategy throughout the day, not just at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, I'm done with my entire thing. Where should I go live? I'll stand out front. So that's something to think about throughout the entire day. Um, Jasmine, you have anything else to add? Because I got one more thing to say, if not. Nope, we're just, I'm waiting. Okay. We have another so one more. Yeah, one more thing to think about. When you have numbers, you can use that to your benefit. There was a story Megan did a couple weeks ago about tolerance increasing with uh, people drinking a lot more. She was at a bar outside, which was cool. But what about showing, like, okay, the tolerance saying that people now, this new study shows by alcohol.com that people used to have one drink when they're out. Now they're ordering two or three. It's a 35% increase over before, and that's leading to a problem for some, but maybe a money problem for another. You go into the story from there. The story was about tolerance. It's costing you more to get drunk, and the people are having issues with their tolerance as well, which is you know what she got in that story. But the way to introduce that with numbers, numbers should be a key to you. How can I show these numbers in a more creative way than just saying them? This was about drinking. The number of drinks in front of you can be a way to introduce the story in a more creative way than just standing there. So think about what you have and, and what you got going on. And we've been seeing some good examples of this. So here's what just a couple that we grabbed recently. Well, Jasmine, I want you all to take a good look at this picture. This is the car that police are now looking for. Between the loud sound and the eight foot Kevlar line with a hook at the end, it really is a shock to the system. However, no pain. Difficult to put out. And I want to show you why Hershey Company uh, here at Consolidated Scrap Resources, they were a huge customer for the recycling plants. And these reels, they're very dense. Uh, this is the wrapping paper that Hershey, Hershey actually uses for their candy. It's very dense. I'd say just off the top of my head, it weighs about 10, maybe 15 pounds. One more. No, I think that's it. And you're not always yeah. going to have a prop, obviously, but take advantage if you do. Don't force it so it's cheesy. But that was those were great examples. 
so a couple other things to think about. So we sort of did this by default the other day with uh, Samantha. So she could not be live in that basement uh, for a number of reasons. I forget why it was. But sometimes an AsLive is going to look better anyway. So if you're going to be standing outside just talking about dangerous basements or wet basements or costly basements, or you can tape something inside as an AsLive, we want you in there to show what's really happening. You know, live is better, but if you can't do it and this is going to be more effective and you're going to be in there showing, moving things, moving around and doing that, that is an option for you sometimes. Uh, so don't be locked into, I can't be there live, I'm not going to even worry about it. If you can really be effective and do that, go for it. Um, so think about that. Um, and that takes us into live events. Yeah. So with live events, um, just make sure that you're taking us there live and you're interviewing people live. Um, I did talk to one of the reporters. Asia actually had told me that Bill Sider says always send some sound back just in case. And that's totally fine um, for, you know, maybe the lights or if your shot dies. But make sure that when you're at a live event, you're speaking to people live. And again, um, the energy that you bring at a live event is going to make the newscast so much better, I promise. Official sound can be replaced uh, many times with facts that you just tell us, like you know what's going on here and here are the facts. And then you can bring us the stories of real people and make really good TV that way. Um, and so that's that's something I wanted to stress. Too many times we go to live events and we are sending back sound. And that's just, again, you have to tell your producers, there's people here, there's stuff going on, we're just going live. Right, what I've often done is I've done that and sent back something, but that's your backup. Because you don't know in a live interview situation, unless you've really set it up with a, somebody who's gonna stay for sure. You don't know who's going to be there. Like today, I'm going to be at the Harrisburg Mile. Yes, I'm probably going to talk to an official who organized the race to get some stats and facts and whatever. But I'm also going to talk to regular runners who were signed up today. But I don't know if they're going to really be there at that exact moment. So maybe send back the sound that you have just in case no one's actually there at that moment or it rains or something. People have to scatter. But you're counting on the live interview. The producers can, can adjust. They can float that sound. But all of a sudden, if you need it, it's there as well. So it's a nice backup to have um, so you're not stuck, you know, just dancing and talking for the entire time. Um, I want to talk about introductions, uh, the anchor intro, reporter intro a little bit. Um, sometimes we're doing these summations of the entire story in the anchor intro, then another summation in the reporter part, and then in the package you said you hit it a third time. I've individually talked to some folks who are already getting better at this, but each piece, think of it as a tease. So kind of like, Lawmakers are finding some new ways to save money in the state budget, but will it cost you? Here's Nick Volterra to explain. I haven't said anything yet about what the topic is, what's going on, but I've mentioned to you, it might cost you money. So there's the hook to get people involved. Then we toss out to, to Nick or whoever, they bring up the issue, what it is, but not the pros and cons of it, that's left over for the package. So each piece gets you to the next piece. If you su summarize everything, um, think of it as a, a, you know, a game, like let's say a Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl, Tom Brady had a great last pass into the end zone at the last second for them to win the championship. Now they're the champs again. They've been celebrating for hours. It was a great day. Okay, now what am I going to tell you in the package? You're going to see some things, but I've given away all the interesting stuff or the exciting stuff to make you keep watching. Um, so at the bottom line, try to stay, keep things moving. And getting back to uh, where you do things again, the Capitol building is a beautiful shot for weather or for, you know, we're talking about stuff at the Capitol. You shouldn't be there unless you're waiting on the results of a big vote and you're going to get people as soon as they come out the door. Otherwise, you need to be what the story is about. So if they're voting on child care, be at a child care center where you just talk to a parent or the parents are coming out or there's kids in the background or something like that. We don't need to be at the Capitol just because there was a vote. The vote was about something. Be where the something was about. Because hopefully that's what your story, you went to that place to find those people anyway. Ask those people to be there. All right, our final thing is, yes, sometimes there seems to be no option. There's nothing going on. So what do you do to make something out of nothing? Every situation is individual, but here's some ideas we had when it seems like it was kind of like nothing there. 
All right, take a look at this. The street is clear. Emergency crews have completely cleared the scene. It's hard to believe that at the intersection of 4th and Vaughn just an hour ago, I couldn't even stand here. There was a four car accident and here's what it looked like. Check it out. And the city just approved to actually change what these playgrounds look like. This new grass in here is actually AstroTurf. It's supposed to be 25% safer for the kids. Well, that was the bad example. Yeah, there's a better one. Okay. Yeah, that was kind of a- Just approved the funding after. for this. They're putting in this AstroTurf here. See it over here? It looks green. It's not actually grass. They think it's 25% safer for the kids, but just think about it. It should be obvious. Do you want to fall on that? Or do you want to fall in here, skin that knee up really good, or even in the grass, get a grass stain that mom's going to have to actually clean out? Instead, they think this stuff is safer, and now it's yeah. here. We are outside Acri Incorporated, and you might be familiar with some of the products that they make, like these benches you see around the city of Harrisburg. The meeting started just 10 minutes ago. We've been knocking on the door, though, all day. Still no answer. We're going to keep you posted with the latest because we want to know exactly what that final decision may be. All right, so some of the things that, that happened there, besides just trying to be creative and moving around a little bit, it goes with, I think the bottom line I want to leave with everybody is this. Just like when you drop food on the ground, there's a five second rule. We can't be on camera for more than five seconds without doing something. Now, there's exceptions to this. You're waking, waiting on breaking news. You're, breaking news just happened and you're just giving the most up-to-date information. You're just regurgitating it all. We don't have video, we try to move with it, whatever. But even with nothing happening, like in Jasmine's right there, everything was gone. She still moved, showed a little bit, set up the video real well and sent it to it. But you can't be on camera or anything else for more than five seconds without doing something. There's lots of studies out there that our attention spans are terrible nowadays, right? So in five seconds, either send it the video, move, show me something, talk to somebody. You got to do something new in every five to six seconds or you're boring the, the, the viewer probably and you're losing their attention and you're or you're not you know seizing these opportunities that you have around you so just think five seconds um and if you have absolutely nothing be real compelling in what you've written in that five to eight seconds let's say before you toss your package and then just toss to the package the, the, the stuff's going to be better with what they have there instead of you just standing there and i have a couple final tips uh the first one is leave your story with a story so whether it's you met someone on the scene and they have a great story on something totally different or um you know there's going to be a follow-up it's great to keep a planner or in your cell phone so that you can follow up i already in my head keep reaching out to megan because i want her to do a follow-up on her homeless story that's a great opportunity where do those people go what's going on um so there's always follow-ups that you have to do and have to keep on that um ask your Yourself, why should the viewer care about what you're saying and how can they relate or at least be interested in what you're saying? Um, I know this sounds ridiculous, but know what you're talking about. Don't just memorize what you're saying. Know what you're saying and talk to us again like a human in a conversational way. Um, uh, this is another one. Find the real story. So don't forget that if you go to a story and you think it's one thing, you know, everything is always changing and so you might think you're going for one reason and you get there and the story is totally different and that's okay you're in charge tell us what the story is um this is huge but really i understand it it's just getting out of your comfort zone but we say it often and it's not done often you don't need to turn a full package daily. You can be creative. You can do other things. It could possibly save you time. It will make better television. There's other ways to showcase something and teach us something. And it's with all the things that we've just said. Um, and here's a great one that I just added. Dress for your story or have something ready to change into because obviously whether uh, the weather um, plays a part or you're sent to breaking news and now you need other clothes, you can't be active if you're not prepared with the right shoes, for example. So bring other clothes to work. All right, guys, great, great presentation, uh, Joel and Jasmine. And uh, I had a couple of things. Uh, so, you know, we're talking about the struggles in our industry, but this is the one thing that we still do well. And the one reason people tune into local news is we can still take them somewhere live. 
Um, you know, so we have to show them something. So that's why the active live shots and the things we're talking about are so important because that's the one thing we can still do well. We can take the viewer there and, and, and you guys have to deliver that. And the second point I would make is this is not just field crews. This is a, a total conversation, especially between producers and your field crews and, and that conversation throughout the day of not just what the, the story is, understanding the story, but talking through what are you going to do live? How are you going to do it? What are you doing in the intro? What are you doing in the tag? Uh, all that stuff needs to be a conversation, not just, okay, reporter X is in the A block and, and we're tossing to them. There's got to be a conversation between the whole team of what it's going to look like and, and then, you know, do we deliver? Uh, so if you have that conversation, it's just going to be better TV. So let's open up for some Q&A here. Um, we got a few more minutes. Well, I'll ask you a question then. Uh, for Samantha, for you guys yesterday, you were in a perfect location to present that story. Did you guys talk about different ways to maybe shoot that when you were there? I mean, we worked out our plan before. Hold on, I gotta put my phone off because they're both looking at this. Uh, we worked out our plan ahead of time and figured out how we wanted to move and showcase some of the stuff that they actually crawled through. Like what I did at 5 p.m. as I started going down through the rubble and crawling into the tunnel. And then at 6, I moved on top of the rubble and Nate was up there too with me so that we could pan down and actually look into the rubble to give a perspective of what first responders have to look into when they're trying to get out valuables and and loved ones, which is what I said in my intro for six to kind of narrate that and explain that a little bit more for viewers. We were going to do more, but there were wasp nests everywhere over there. <laughs> so to kind okay. of ruin that. Yeah. Yeah. But so the, we and that's the kind of place. Jump off in three minutes just so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the kind of place where you can really like, I mean, be creative. You can try to hide yourself in the stuff a little bit by being a far shot away. And then you zoom in through that circle. You know, you can shoot through there. And just like having fun with it and talking about it because you guys are starting to get to these really smart positions and then uh, just taking it the rest of the way. The other thing I didn't mention was talking to the camera sometimes like it's a person like for that one. Um, it's a little insensitive because of what they were looking for were like, you know, people. But you could say, you know, can you see anything in there right now? And then you zoom in. That's the kind of stuff they had to go look through, blah, blah, blah. So kind of taking the viewer there with a question. And then the answer can be, you know, what they're seeing as well. Try to use the camera as the eyes of the viewer and remember what they're seeing is what we're showing them. So we can limit that or expand it however we like and use that as another tool. No, we wanted to crawl around a little bit more and stuff, but then we saw the major wasp nest and we're like, eh, <laughs> probably not a good idea. They were yep. not nice. <laughs> and I wonder, and I always question this, is that something this I'm asking everyone? Is that something you say? Like, we're pretty close to this, and this is exactly where these people practice. But not only does it look dangerous, I mean, we're dealing with wasps right now. So I'm going to stay away from that area, take you over here. Um, it reminds me of another story, and I don't want to keep telling Megan, but I love Megan. Um, we were talking the other day. Before her live shot, just like seconds before her live shot, she got a really important document. And I think that a lot of us put pressure on ourselves like uh, this just in. Here's what it says. But you can say I just got this document from the D.A. three minutes ago. I have not had time to go through it. I'm going to look through it. But here's what we know so far. It's OK to say what you don't know or things that people, you know, take us to the real thing. Be real with us. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I think that's showing, you know, honesty and, and, and that we don't know all the answers yet, but we're going to get them for you. Definitely. Good points. Anybody else? All right, guys, well, we'll uh, you know, see what progress we make here, but everybody's doing good. I think we are looking at this. I think I think a lot of things that we're doing, uh, nobody else is paying attention to that. So it's really about making the newscast better. So I'll be encouraged to see if you use some of these tips and uh, we'll uh, rejoin uh, again uh, next week. Yeah, and I would say feel free if you guys are at a spot or you're kind of like stuck with like, I don't know what we can do with this. Feel free to call me. I love brainstorming these things out and maybe we can come up with something. Um, 
as well. That's a little bit more than just standing in front of the place. Maybe we can come up with something. So I'm up for that too. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.